All right, guys, do not buy Cyberstorm Access. And obviously, this is only from a monetary standpoint. There are some fantastic cards in this set, which we will go over. But in terms of actually buying the set, I'm going to go ahead and drop you guys the info on why I would suggest not to buy it. Obviously, use your own info, but I'm here to go ahead and talk a little bit about this set. So, starting right off, it's dropped in price significantly. And why has it dropped in price? Well, there really isn't any good chase cards other than Starlight, which is basically from every single Yu-Gi-Oh set going forward. Forward, unless they're like some like offset there's going to be starlight rares those are very expensive now the super heavy samurais are actually quite great if you guys have not seen those i will also link some of these uh, gameplays of these brand new archetypes well kaoshi is absolutely insane one of the most busted cards but it's only three bucks if you're interested in building the majority of the decks that you're about to see in this video you can actually pick the singles up for way cheaper than buying the booster boxes so start right off i want to go ahead and cover all of like the money cards in the set because the whole point of this video, by the way, is to tell you guys, you know, not to buy it because of, you know, the card's value, not necessarily because this set sucks as in it has a bunch of bad cards, because there are quite a few awesome uh, new archetypes that have emerged out of this. Some of these are actually getting even better support later down the line. So, so on right off, um, as far as the secret rares go, and just to go over like the price points, keep in mind things can change, but this is as of 5-5-2023, five, five, um, the, the booster boxes are about 67 bucks. So let's just say about 70 bucks for the set, right? Uh, and of course, you're going to be able to get double secret rares now if you oh, on average okay sometimes there are like you know uh, machine factory errors but for the most part if you're looking to actually go plus off of pulling like the two hottest secret rares there is no 100 plus secret rare chaos angel is actually almost 50 bucks but even if you pulled a uh, chaos angel and the um guiding quem uh you're still barely going positive obviously everything else from there is all going to be uphill but for the most part you'd have to pull the two best secrets out of the box to actually be able to uh go super plus unless you're of course you're getting starlet rare which i will touch up upon but for the most part these are the current values uh there's basically five cards that are good everything else is really low in terms of the price some of these may increase specifically the gold pride could actually increase if they get some extra better support they're actually not a bad archetype especially with the rollerballer where you're able to absorb everything that have some potential but for the most part i would say that rescue ace is going to be one of the stronger decks going forward also uh, these super heavy sams are still pretty good so as far as the secret rares goes that's kind of what we're looking in terms of the price point you have like four decent cards maybe like five uh but the rest um they're kind of subpar especially like the box card the firewall uh dragon singularity uh that one's only like five bucks and one of the secrets um lord of the soul swords over here is only a dollar 45 now looking at some of the ultras some of them actually hold a little bit more value than even the secrets uh but um the uh gold pride chariot carry very good card also the super heavy samurai brave uh, only a dollar here so most of them are not going to be too expensive that's because super rares are a lot easier to pull but yeah the pinballer is pretty cool it's only 70 cents though again um these are the ultras in the set so you're really looking at bestial dispater this is a fantastic card a lot of decks will uh, maybe consider throwing this in as it's kind of a slightly generic it's a non-tuner dragon monster but being able to target a banished light or dark monster and then just special summon it to your field and one of the activate effect you can target a banished card and shuffle it back into the deck and then uh if you shuffle it into uh, your deck you get to destroy if you shuffle it into your opponents get in the gate it's a really good card overall and there are going to be multiple decks that can make use out of uh just pater but one of the, like, the better uh cards here um and then after that the rest of the stuff i mean it depends what you're playing the uh man mana diem these used to be called the mana domes by the way so if you guys are wondering like you know the names uh if you're looking up any gameplays uh mana diem is the new name now the mana dome synchro deck is not bad but it's more niche and it, at the end of the day synchro decks if you guys have played synchros you know that hand traps absolutely obliterate those decks because they need so many steps and if you like just disrupt one part uh yeah they're not gonna do so hot so um that card's like seven bucks but for the most part again it's gonna be pretty hard to plus off the uh, ultras here um now we are looking at the super rares so in terms of the super rares it's literally just the super heavy samurai prodigy wakaoshi that is like the best card uh by far it's by a long shot Th there is kind of a second place um now if you guys want to see gameplay of this i will also have some in the pinned comment but time tearing morganite is actually a pretty interesting card as well um this is a card that a lot of people had a lot of um 
things to say about it. So it's pretty crazy. It's for the rest of the duel, you apply the following effects. So you cannot activate monster effects in the hand. So basically no hand traps. You draw two cards instead of your normal draw during your draw phase. And then on top of that, you get to conduct two normal summons or set per turn. And then on top of that, you can banish this card from a graveyard, discard a time tearing Morganite. Your opponent can't activate monster effects uh, when you normal summon this turn. Obviously, since it activates for the rest of the duel, you only really need to activate one of them. The rest of them are kind of just bricks i mean it does have that effect where you can banish it and discard and it's okay but for the most part <coughs> most part you're only there for the uh, very first part of the effect which is you just activate instantly it has the potential for some rogue decks but because it's only super rare again it's going to be really easy to access it's another fantastic card um if it was like a secret rare i think that uh, some people would actually uh, consider this set to be a little bit better just because again um, some of those like obscure cards for like very niche players, like some of like the rogue anti-meta, cause that's kind of what it is. Um, but at the end of the day, hand traps are just way too good in modern Yu-Gi-Oh to not play. But there are some decks that may be able to use this. And because you do actually banish it, you'd have to actually banish another one of them. Um, but you could in theory attempt to go for it in a deck where you need to have like a low amount of like stuff in the graveyard or uh, the super heavy samurai archetypes all about not having any spells just traps but uh, you can technically banish it but then you still have one so it's kind of it's kind of counterproductive but you can maybe figure it out uh next up in terms of the starlight rares what are the current values so the guiding quem is very expensive 380 uh but the rest are like 200 it's, it's not going to be like any 500 card i think anytime soon sometimes you know, Starlights do go up and down in price, but for the most part, uh, that's what we're looking at. And on top of that, Vicious Starfrest does come in Starlight Rare. I would say if any of the cards are going to hold their value, uh, definitely look at this card as this card is going to be a card that a lot of people will splash in multiple different decks because it is a tuner and because it's level six, you can go for a lot of different plays, but it's like 200 bucks. It's probably one of the best uh, Starlight Rares to come out over here. There's also Lulu Walleth which is a pretty decent card, but it's more like niche. Um, on top of that, uh, other great cards, the Gold Pride Roller Baller. Uh, if you guys haven't seen this deck, uh, you do have some good plays with it. I just recently did cover it. So again, that will be pinned down below. It's only like a $10 secret rare, but another great card. In fact, um, even like the Pinballer, which I already mentioned, it's like a few cents. It's like a dollar, which is crazy because it's so good. You can literally fusion using like all of your... Um, you get to equip your uh, opponent's monsters to it, so it basically is a Katamari Damacy. You get to like absorb your uh, opponent's cards onto it. I think it's a really cool concept. Um, and then on top of that, I already mentioned um, the Super Heavy Samurai, but again, this is another one of those fantastic cards, and it's good. I mean, and it's effective when your opponent activates a spell or trap, except during the damage step, you can draw until you have three cards, and that's during either player's turn. So you, if your opponent does it on your turn and you have no cards in hand, bam, that's three cards addition to your plays. Maybe you start using hand traps during your opponent's turn, they activate another spell trap, bam, you just draw three more. It's pretty nasty. Uh, again, it's only like a dollar, but be on the lookout for this card if you are uh, playing. Now, as far as the Amanda Dome, I did mention that I did cover this, and if you guys do want to see gameplay of it, it is mostly going to be a synchro deck. Um, this is a really good card, though, because even though it's only a 39 cent card, the whole point of this video is to cover like the best cards in the set, but also like giving you guys info of why I would recommend not to buy it. Um, but basically, if you control Vista Starfrost, which is a card that uh, comes in the collector's rare, you get a special summon it, and then if it's uh, destroyed by Battle Bar card effect, which you will activate some effect to destroy this, uh, you can then summon another uh, Mana Diem. I don't know why they didn't call it Mana Dome. It just makes way more sense, but nonetheless, that is part of like the Mana Dome archetype. This deck is pretty good too. Again, you can just spam off the board with Synchros. You can even go, even go for a Baron. You can go for multiple good boss monsters. There's the Dispater over there as well. And there is another newer archetype, the Numeralia. Um, I do have gameplay that I will be dropping very soon. They just got some newer support announced, and obviously the newer gameplay will have it. They're kind of lackluster um, at the end of the day, I would say compared to like the Rescue Ace, which has so many one combos. Um, uh, one card combos uh but there's also the mikankos mikankos are out in here mikankos aren't bad at all they actually have a really good matchup against the akash uh, tiras um if you guys haven't seen gameplay of the manado uh not manado it's the mikankos uh definitely check it out i'll link it down below as well and then on top of that there is the rescue ace stuff i mean this is a really cheap card but if you guys are interested in one of the best archetypes uh upcoming in the next format yeah rescue ace is absolutely insane there's one card combos that will absolutely make your opponent rethink even going up against you because again it's a one card combo and you get to like draw multiple cards and you get to set like three or four back row it is absolutely one of the best things ever 
And then I was looking at the rest of the cards. I'm like, okay, that's really about it in terms of like uh, what's actually here. So hopefully this video was informative for you guys and you guys can make the decision yourself if you want to buy it or not. And I'm actually kind of curious to know, are you guys even interested in buying Cyberstorm Access? I'm talking about just buying the booster boxes to open up uh, in terms of this video, by the way. It's uh, obviously if you are buying singles, I think that there are some good cards in the set, but I, in terms of buying this for the box, I would stay away from it. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up. If you guys enjoyed the video and found something useful in the video, drop a like on it. If you're new here, hit subscribe turn on the bell so you don't miss out when we cover more new Yu-Gi-Oh sets in the future. Take care. See you on the next video. Peace out.